everyone, and welcome to another episode of It's Been Real. I am Sarah. And I'm Barry. And this week's episode, we decided to do a theme of So Bad, It's Good. Yep. Every <laughs> every film we're going to be talking about is like in that, that nice little category of like, oh, that's pretty bad. But you know what? I still got to see it. <laughs> yeah. So before we get into some of the movies that we're going to talk about, uh, just found out some really awesome movie news. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, according to uh, Screen Rant, mm-hmm. uh, Peter Storm Stormare, mm-hmm. yeah, um, he, he's saying that there is uh, talks that Constantine 2 is going to be in the works. Oh, that's fun. I am excited. For for those that don't know who Peter Stormare is, he played Lucifer in the original Constantine. My favorite Satan. He's, oh yeah, no, he's just that actor who's been in everything. You, you you know him when you see him. But yeah, no, if any movie that needed to get like a delayed sequel Constantine, like, ah. Mwah. 15 years. It's been 15 years. Yeah, exactly. I need Tilda Swinton to come back as Gabriel oh. and I need her to just ham it up again, please. Oh yeah, no, like everyone, like Constantine was one of those films that like everyone, like Hated when it came out, like when it first came out, but like it was like, actually a good movie. It, it just, was. Like, it just wasn't the comic book. Oh, like well, who cares? It's Keanu Reeves <laughs> fighting demons. I'm sold. Well, obviously, some people still care. I'm just worried that like the um actually people are gonna come out after this movie is. We to that I can say you know what you can go to the CW then whatever with your Constantine <laughs> because I I want to see Keanu Reeves punch you know demons and stuff like that with, hanging out with Shia LaBeouf why not Oh my God please get Shia LaBeouf back. Oh, heck yes. Yes. But yeah, that's the that's the movie news that uh, came out recently. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have anything? Uh, no, I think I think we can move on to our previews. Yes. So the movie that I found mm-hmm. uh, that I think that you would really like, and it's it looks campy as all get out. It's called Max Cloud. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, basically, girl gets sucked up into a video game. And interacts with her favorite video game character, which is Mac Cloud. Well, yeah, played by Scott Atkins. <laughs> yes. It looks really good. Like, Jumanji meets Turbo Kid. Which I'm all for that. It's like like one of those old, like, 16-bit video games. Like, it's like Streets of Rage meets, like, Buck Rogers or, like, uh, Flash Gordon. Which yes. I'm totally 100% on board for. This seems <laughs> campy. It looks, it, it's very self-aware. Like, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yes, it looks so good. Like, like when I was watching it... I, like, couldn't help but smile. <laughs> like, it just yep. looks so good. Oh, yeah, no. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to see this. Like, uh, hopefully it'll come out within... Uh, it's coming out within, the, what, the, this next year or so? Something like that. They didn't have a release date that I could see, but it's coming out mm. either, like, very end of this year into next year. Okay, all right. Uh, for mine, mine's coming out this year, and it is Jiu-Jitsu. Uh <sighs> God. Yes. Ah, oh, this movie, this trailer, mm, just deliciousness. It's like, what if the what if the movie Predator was in Mortal Kombat? Oh God! And, yeah. But, and what if Raiden was played by Nick Cage? Oh my God! It and it has everything. And it's crazy, Nick Cage too. Oh. Like this is I don't give a fuck. I'm a vampire. <laughs> Zero filter, Nick Cage, just. Roll in the camera, Nick. Go. We'll just film. <laughs> we'll film around you. It's fine. It looks. It. It looks like. Uh. It looks like a. It's just a bad sci-fi movie, but like really good kung fu. I mean, I, I expect nothing better from the makers of Bloodsport, like Redemption, like Retaliation, or like, something like generic. Like, I don't know. It looks. Ah, uh, like everyone in it. Like I don't know. It just. It. It looks bad, but like. Still, like, in a good sci-fi, like, channel, original movie. Like, still looks, like, higher quality than that. Like, I don't know. It It's goofy, and it's fun, and I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I I love Nick Cage, so I want to go see it, but I know, like, I'm going to sit there and just be, like, mind-numbed. Moving on. Yeah, so we watched a really special movie. For the real review. Yes. Yes. And you're the one who picked it out this time. Yes. For like those who've been like following along, uh, Sarah has been picking the movies that we re- like we review for the main section for the episode. Yes. So it was, they thought it was time for me to pick a movie. And after this pick, I don't think I'm allowed to pick any more movies, apparently. <laughs> Just from the look from Sarah's face. It was, 
Uh, yeah, so we watched Money Plane. Yeah. Money Plane. Money Plane. Uh, for those who don't know about Money Plane, uh, oh basic, the basic synopsis is um, a group of thieves after a botched heist have to work for this evil underground kingpin and to like to make up for like the money they, they lost, whatever. And the way to do it is to pull another heist. And they have to break into the money plane. This is, it was dumb. Oh. It was so, so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. It stars, and I'm putting quotes around that, uh, Adam Copeland, a.k.a. WWE's The Edge. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Jane, Denise Richards, and Kelsey Grammer as <laughs> Darius Scrouch the Third, a.k.a. The Rumble. I would say a uh, spoiler warning for this movie, but like the movie's called Money Played, so if you're if you're if you're <laughs> mad like, about spoilers, then I'm sorry, but we have to talk about this movie. Yeah, it's like it's like snakes on a plane, mm -hmm. where like you really don't need any other like like what's it about? It's about snakes on a plane. <laughs> This it's is, money plane. What is money plane about? It's about a plane that has money. Uh, yeah, it's it's if if Ocean's Eleven meets like Con Air, or whatever. It's <laughs> that's the perfect way to say it. It is. Uh, <laughs> it is an interesting, like you said, like yeah, the money plane is like a sky casino in international airspace, which that doesn't exist, does it? That's not really a thing. Like international waters, I could understand, but international air. Oh God! Oh yeah, like the like the, the the concept of like it has like millions of dollars, but then there's billions of cryptocurrency in the like the server room of this air that, airplane. That's not yeah, how, that's not how cryptocurrency works. Yeah, but who cares? It's money plane. Oh my God! The more that they explained money plane, like in like their exposition, the more I'm just like, no one has ever. No one has any, like, idea of, like, how any of this shit works. Who cares? It's money playing. <laughs> no. But, like, again, this movie, like, we want to see this movie, let alone just the trailer alone from Kelsey Grammer saying one line and one line only. Whatever you want to wager on, the money plane has you covered. You want to bet on a dude fucking an alligator. Money plane. <laughs> and I'm sold. We are watching this. And I was very disappointed. <laughs> Same. No, like, 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 I like sat there. Like after we saw the trailer, I was like, okay, this is this is gonna be dumb. This is mm -hmm. gonna be like really dumb. And you're like, well, we're gonna watch it. I'm like, no. <laughs> but uh, again, I wanted it to be so bad. It's good. Unfortunately, it was not good. <laughs> it's it wasn't that bad either it was just very meh but yeah i said again it's star the star power of this movie like these people are barely in it but like like adam goblin like you think like the edge like dude doesn't do anything yeah. in the movie like we like i sat here i'm like oh he's a wrestler so we're gonna see like action movies that like john cena mm -hmm. a reminiscent of like the rock or something like that like and no he just wears a man bun walks around and looks shocked at everything that everyone is telling him. Oh, yeah. Like, he's stuck in the cockpit the entire movie because he's the only one who can fly the plane after they break into the money plane. Yeah. Surprisingly, uh, the one that actually does all that fighting is an actress known as Katrina Norman. Okay. Uh, like, the whole time I kept looking, she just looked like, like, if Anna Kendrick... I'm like, is that Anna Kendrick? No. no that's not like, Anna Kendrick. I just, again, fun fact... I wish it was Anna Kendrick. <laughs> fun fact, I thought this, like, this like, this actress was, like, uh, like a stunt performer or, like, another wrestler. Like, no, she's a dancer. What? Yeah, that's... Her whole... Her background is, like, she is a professional dancer. Like, like that's what she... But, like, but she kicked so much ass in this movie. Yeah, to a point of, like, this movie's an R, but, like, like... Like, the action sequence and stuff, like, like Copeland and everything like that, like, it yeah. doesn't hurt, like, like, but when she shows up, like, it becomes, like, a John Wick movie, and you're just like, oh, no! No, like, that was the only reactions I ever got, is during her fight scene, like, she rips Guy's ears off of his head. Yeah! And, like, throws her shoe, like, so it's like, with the stiletto heel at his face, but it wasn't the heel that ran into his eye, no, it was the toe of the shoe that ran into his eye, and I went... I'm sorry, how hard were you throwing that shoe, Missy? <laughs> exactly. Like, again, this movie, like, I, like the, clearly she was the actual star of this movie. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. I, I hope she has a she has a high career after this because, like, 
this whole movie is based like around her like kicking everyone's ass like because she did all the work in this whole movie. Yeah, she she did a lot of the grunt work in this movie. Unlike you know the, the act- edge. Yeah, the edge <laughs> or like the other top billing actress in this movie, Denise Richards, who's only in two scenes. Yeah, like I haven't seen Denise Richards in another uh, show. Her playing herself on Thirty Rock, where she oh god, she wasn't Thirty Rock. Yeah, like I I don't want to harp on her. Like she, I'm sure she's a nice lady, like, but I don't understand why she was in. This this movie. I don't either. Like, I don't like, I don't know what they were thinking, but I know that she has a good agent. Mm-hmm. She got top billed and she's only in it for like maybe 10 she, minutes. She's in, the, she's in the movie post. She's like on like front bill. Yeah. Like, well, so like their whole thing is like they needed to age their kid up mm-hmm. oh, a yeah. lot. Oh yeah. Uh, again. Yeah. This movie is very, um, every, if you've seen a heist film, this is, it's like every kind of cliche and trope but not. It's like, yeah. like, yes, like, he, Adam Copeland, like, he like he has to do this heist, or Kelsey Grammer is gonna kill his wife and daughter, played by Denise Richards, and, like, their daughter's, like, ten? Maybe. And they're both, I, like, I'm just saying, like, everyone, I'm, no, I don't wanna, like, be, like, ageist or anything, like, but they needed to be, like, ten years younger for that to or work. Or ten years older. Kid had to be going, like, to college, like, I'm sorry, cause it's, no. Yeah, like, I mean, it's not ageist, like, they just didn't cast it right. Right, no. The good casting was Kelsey Grammer. Oh my god, Kelsey Grammer. Mwah. Like, chef kiss. Like, he is just, like, the mustache twirling villain. Like, like clearly he was on, like, one set for, like, a day. Mm-hmm. But, oh boy. With and the... they just, like, they literally just handed him the script and they were like, you know what? You do what you think is right, Kelsey. We'll go with it. Again, this movie is just chock full of just, like, cliche, like, one-liners, like, get me my money, or you're dead. You hear me? You're dead. More Kelsey Grammer. Also, surprisingly, like, a decent performance. Thomas Jade, like, also, like, clearly they had him for, like, a day, whatever. Like, like when I first saw him on screen, I just went, oh, hello. I didn't realize that you were in here. And I was really worried that I was going to get, like, another reprisal of, like, fucking Predator. Yeah, no, like, it's... Yeah, like, uh, again, this might be a controversial take, whatever, but, like, Thomas Jane's performance in Money Plane is better than the actual blockbuster Predator. Yeah, it well, duh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, clearly, a lot of these actors, this was just a paycheck. Like, there was, like, zero fucks given. But somehow, like, Thomas Jane was, like, clearly thought this movie was, like, a John Wick movie because, like, oh, all yeah. his scenes were, like, people raiding the house and him shooting stuff. Like, like why? It, it was very reminiscent of John Wick, especially with that house scene. Yeah. But, like, he's hiding and doing headshots left and right. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. No, it's like this movie directed by um, Andrew Lawrence. Uh, yeah. It's like, and also stars his brothers, Joey and Matthew Lawrence. That's yeah. right. We got a brotherly love reunion that no one asked for or needed. And I love it. They were the three characters that I actually was like, you know what? These guys are real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for people who don't know who actually Andrew Lawrence is, uh, you would know him as the the voice actor for TJ on Recess. <gasps> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh my god! Exactly. Like it's just this movie. Just like with the when the Lor- anytime the Lawrence brothers were on screen, like they knew what movie they were in. Oh they yeah. Were, it was like so much ham, and I loved every single performance. This movie, like, it's not a good movie, but there are good moments. Like, there's, like, scenes, like, I feel like they wrote, like, the entire script was based around, like, we have to do this one scene. Yeah. No, no, that's exactly what it feels like. And, like, the scenes that had the brothers in it. So, mm-hmm. like, you have Andrew. hmm And he's the director. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, he had to write himself out of the script in some way, shape, or form. So, like, while everyone else is on the money plane, they were like, no, you know what, Andrew? We're going to keep you on the ground because you have to set up the satellite so that we can transfer all the money to the ground. Yeah, the bit currency, like, transfer, like, you know. Yeah, the, we, the have, ha- we have to transfer. Once the, we hack the mainframe and splice the firewall to get the, the bitcoins to the, to the yeah, ground. because we have to transfer the bitcoin from our server to to this small laptop. And he was just like, well, this, this job sucks. And he just, like, acted like a PA the whole time, like, setting up light equipment <laughs> and, like, setting up wires and, like, untangling wires and shit. Oh, yeah, no, like, that's why I'm, I'm laughing because, like, literally his whole, like, setup for, like, the, like, whatever, like, the, like, the satellite, whatever, it was, it was literally a C-stand. Like, for those who are in the industry, it's, like, it's literally just grip equipment. And, like, I love it. <laughs> And, and then, um, with Joey Lawrence, like, he oh, was the just, concierge. like, he was the concierge, and he had 
this voice all the time. You know, don't disrespect the house. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so good. Again, the the concept of uh, an illegal <laughs> casino in an airplane, that's, I mean, sign me up. There's a fun concept. I just wish they had focused more on that the actual concept than what they that we yeah. got, whatever. Like, go goofy with it, go all out with it. Like, mm-hmm. like again, Matthew Lawrence's character was the Texan. Like, he had a, <laughs> I can't lose! <laughs> like, he had a full, like, clearly a fake mustache. And I'm like, again, me and Sarah, we watch a lot of bad movies, so we try to, like, predict, like, tropes and everything. We're going like, oh, he's gonna be, like, some, like, secret agent, like, that's, like, works for the government who's trying to break down, like, undercover. Like, nope, he's an actual Texan. And, like, like we're just not, we're, we just have, we're not supposed to acknowledge the fact that he has like the fakest of fakest mustaches and you're just like that's cool and, and he's just like so over the top and, and i loved it and it's amazing like again like if you're gonna be cliche and like use tropes like they're like go all in on it like they just like but they didn't it, like half like they would like start a, they would start a cliche and just like drop it and band it immediately like if you're gonna if you're gonna be like hammy go all out we didn't get into like some of the more ridiculous points of the movie but i feel like you need to experience it firsthand it's not so bad it's good like it it, it misses the marks it's like so close if like it, like i kind of want there to be a sequel for this like money playing to the house remembers or something you're like the house always wins so uh sarah like what would you review this what would, what would you give it i would give it a two out of five a two out of five yeah just for the fact that like the parts that hit were very far and few in between for me and it was just a chore to watch the edge Mm -hmm. oh i'm sorry what was his name adam copeland adam copeland you have not earned that status my friend yeah you have not earned like regular name status (laughs) you are just a wrestler to me (laughs) sorry adam i'm sure you're a nice guy (laughs) (laughs) he seems like a nice dude but just (laughs) Woof. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, for me, yeah, that's about me. Like, I would have, I wanted to give this a better score, but, like, you know, it's it's a 4 out of 10 for me. Uh, <laughs> like, again, it's bad. It's just very, like, in the middle. Like, it played it safe on how bad it is. Like, it yeah. either go all out being bad or, like, clearly this is a very micro-budgeted film. And, like, yeah. you could, you know what? With the budget they had, sh- kudos for them. Like, the sets looked fine. Like, it's like it, it, the whole movie just seemed cheap, but it still worked. I mean, what other movie do you have with a drone with, a, like, a gun tape next on top of it? That's just, that's, <laughs> it's the best scene. But, yeah, like, no, like, it, there are, like you said, there are scenes that are just, like, Oh, mm, so bad, so delicious, but but they're so far between like the blase exposition, the hamminess. But yeah, it's not so bad. It's good, but it's still like it's at Redbox. Check it out. So it's- you also got to pick the next movie for what? what's, what's in, in the, the box. box? Uh, what's in the box? Yep. While Money Plane was uh, not so bad enough to be good, I picked a good movie that was trying to be bad. Yes. Dare I say, super bad. (laughs) Um, So your hint for me was a blast from the past. And that was Black Dynamite. Dynamite! 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 (laughs) Dynamite! Dynamite! Ah, yes. It was really, like... I stared at this movie and was like, what the fuck am I watching? But it was like an enjoyable, what the fuck am I watching? Like, I have never seen anything quite like this movie. Yeah. Uh, For those who don't know, uh, Black Dynamite is like one of those like parody of the blaxploitation genre. Yeah. It it stars Michael Jai White as ex-military, ex-CIA, current Pimp and vigilante Black Dynamite, and after the man has murdered his brother Jimmy, he, oh Jimmy, he ha- he has to go on a killing spree and like and shenanigans ensue, and it just keeps getting ridiculous and more ridiculous as it progresses. Yeah, like it got to like the point where like they had changed it from being just like a black exploitation film to like a war movie. I was just like, what the at- when. Oh my god, when did it's, we change scenes here? It is it is every, it's like an old 70s, like, pulpy comic book, like, come to life. Like, it's just every genre, like, of 70s, like, exploitation films all in one. Uh, it has everything. It has, it, really does. it has evil kung fu scientists. It has a harem of kung fu hookers. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, oh, and the ghost of Abraham Lincoln, because why not? <laughs> but yeah, no, this movie, it's like, unlike a lot of, like, parody films, like, this, why this movie works so well, like, it, while, well, yes, it is, like, a farce, or, like, an, oh, like, a farce of, like, the exploitation genre, but it also, like, it's also a homage to it, like, it, like, while it like it is a parody, it also still feels like it would be part of the times. Oh yeah, it it felt like it. Like there were like a couple things that they did that was like, oh, this is obviously a parody. Mm-hmm. Like you can see the boom mic in a whole bunch of scenes. Well, you know, like it's, it's, they it can look at the camera and things like that. Oh but... yeah, the fact that like yeah, they they purposely tried to make it look everyone was like really bad at acting or doing their job, whatever. Like the fact that like the our main our main star, whatever, who is a who actually knows, like, martial arts and everything, it looks like he's afraid to, like, throw a punch, or, like, he has, like, his whole time, like, he's, his he has to close his eyes because he's afraid, like, he's gonna get hit or something like that. No, 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 like, uh, I noticed that when he was, like, swinging around his nunchuck, he would, like, flinch and close his eyes because he thought he was gonna deck himself in the face, and I was just like, this guy's afraid he's actually gonna hit himself. I'm like, is this the actor, or is it the acting? It is the act. It's, it, it's very self-aware <laughs> yes. about how bad those, like, some of those former 70s action stars are. Like, oh my and god. again, shout out to Michael Jai White. Like, like, dude, dude's been around since the 90s, since, like, Spawn and all that yeah. stuff. Like, and, like, he just has a career, like, he, like, he's somewhere between, like, Wesley Snipes meets Jim Kelly. Like, like he's, yeah. like, like, he just never, like, he, he never gets those, like, those, like, like, blockbuster films. Like, like you, you see him every once in a while, but, like, but, like, he's just, like, he commits, when he commits, like, he delivers, like, that deadpan humor, and it's just so good. good. But, yeah, no, uh, so... Our, what do you say, Sarah? Is this a keep? Yes, this is a keep. Whoop, whoop! I, I think it's the score so far. I think I'm three for three. Yeah, and I am... You are two for three because we still haven't finished Penny Dreadful. Yeah, we still haven't finished it yet. Next week, mm-hmm. I am going to pick a movie from the box. Oh, yeah? Yes. Um, The hint for you is called Improv Mayhem. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I don't think this one's going to make it to the shelf. (laughs) (laughs) All right. With that, I think that's going to wrap up this week's episode. Um, Tune in next week. I think it will be another... I think it's another uh, episode with you and Coder. Yes. Uh, What are you guys reviewing this time? Oh, uh, we are going to be reviewing 007 Goldeneye. Ooh, fun, fun. Yes. I... Cannot wait. I, we had so much fun watching this movie. Well, that's good. All right. Um. Again, uh, where can they find us, Sarah? Well, they can find us on Twitter. I am at, at Scriptworthy. And I'm at, at <laughs> FilmBuff89. Uh, also, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so and you know when we uh, post next. And leave a comment down below. What would you think of these movies? Did you see Money Plane? Did you not? It's okay. <laughs> Leave, let us know down below and if you guys want to um, tell us about movies that are coming out that you're interested in us seeing please let us know oh yeah like we got nothing better to do and like always guys it's been real take care everybody bye Woo-hoo! You're such a dork. Mm-hmm.